concise. Um, my apologies, I, I want to be clear that so your first question, do you support legislation to expand Social Security and eliminate taxable income? Uh, the answer to that is yes, and I thought that was, in, uh, my intent was for in reading the letter from the head of the Social Security and Medicare Association where he talked about her 100% rating, which is evident of legislation that she has written, co-sponsored and voted on. Uh, that, is a, that is important to the uh, aging community in America, and that is something that she wholeheartedly supports. Um, the the uh, health care, uh, will you support legislation to finish the job uh, and to uh, cover everyone through an improved Medicare for all slash single payer system? I want to be very clear on this one because uh, this is something that folks like to talk a lot about or, or criticize us a lot about. Dianne Feinstein is not standing in the school doorway saying stop single payer. Dianne Feinstein is saying show me how it works. And there is a, there's a bill. There is a, uh, can I, 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 this is important, I, I, where, where, I, where we come from, the way our office works, we get into the details. And so I, I, I'd like to take a minute to get into the details. There is a piece of legislation that has been scored at $27 trillion. Federal budget's a little less than $2 trillion. This bill is an important bill. There is a lot of support all over the nation for this bill. This is a bill that a lot of members of the Senate have signed on to. And so it ought to go through the regular process. Those who are preventing this legislation from going through the regular process of having committee hearings and allowing this organization, the California Alliance, to weigh in and other organizations to weigh in are the Republicans. It's Orrin Hatch, who's the chair of the Senate Finance Committee. And it's the head of the uh, Health, Labor, Education, and Pensions Committee. It's not Dianne Feinstein. Dianne Feinstein's the ranking member of the Judiciary Committee, and she's doing her job as we speak. And so I can tell you what she has introduced right now because she believes we could pass it right now. She has legislation to lower the age of eligibility for Medicare to 55 years old. So people like my mom who are underemployed but who need to go to the doctor on a regular basis are covered by Medicare. That is legislation she has right now. Senator Feinstein, during the fight for the Affordable Care Act, and she's pushing now, a public auction, Medicare X, which basically means you can buy in to Medicare with federal subsidies. So me, as a relatively healthy 26-year-old, when I'm evaluating my health care options, whether I want to go through Covered California, whether my employer-based plan works for me, or whether buying in the Medicare base works for me, that is an option that exists for me as well. And so I want you all to know we're not, there's, we, a lot of times people like to run rumors around that, that there's these crazy ideas as to why someone's opposed to something. I don't know that she said she's opposed to it as much as she said, show me how it works. And how do you do that? We have Congress do their job and we hold hearings and we have amendments and we debate the bill. Is anybody opposed to that? I'll continue. Will Medicare, uh, will you support uh, expansion for Medicare? So again, the answer to that is yes, and that was I thought was encapsulated in the letter from the head of the organization. Uh, and then finally, will you support efforts to increase funding to build a truly affordable housing program? Yes, that is important to her. So I mentioned a little bit about homeless uh, veterans. I talked about uh, a legislation to return some of your tax dollars if you pay in excess of 30% in rent. Uh, but also, something I worked a lot on, I actually come from the Senate office, I'm on leave now. It is affordable housing and low-income housing. In Los Angeles, Watts uh, in South Los Angeles is the highest concentration of housing projects in the nation, uh, right here in the state of California. And we have been very involved in bringing in federal dollars to uh, renovate so people who live in that community have dignity, they have access to jobs, we're bringing in businesses, and we're doing mixed use so those who aren't necessarily low income can live in there as well. So you can have a family where my grandmother, who, pay, who pays 75% of her income, and rent could live there, and then me, as her grandson, who's a part of her caretaker, who may not qualify for the low income, could live there as well. And so uh, we are all for innovative ideas. We're all for making sure that people aren't sleeping on the streets or paying more than 30% of their income for housing. And so the answer to most of these questions is yes, and to the, the Medicare for all question, I hope you all would at least respect her deep thought and reflection on this and wanting to make it work. $27 trillion uh, is something that ought to, we ought to have a long, hard conversation about now to go through the regular process. And when we went back to Senate, maybe we can do that. <laughs>